The actual movement for this class should be fairly simple to implement uh, because again we're using the character movement component here. That means as with our player class, just to kind of recap what we were doing, we can really leverage some of the movement logic already available within the character movement, provide it a direction that it needs to move, and that will be pretty much the logic that we need to do there. So that was on the input movement, and we can see we've got the add movement input. So we're going to do something very, very similar. In fact, if you have the player class already open, we can copy this node. We're going to use exactly the same thing. We'll move back on over to the enemy bat class. And the only difference, of course, is that because we don't have an input to drive this from, we're going to paste this in next to the event tick, hook this back up, and then all we really need to do is work out how we're going to get this scale value. So at the moment, we have the x world direction to move in so again we're moving left and right we don't need any forward or backwards or vertical movement for our bat so if we actually go and play this right now this would be doing at least the very basic movement that we need so we can simulate that here we can see a couple of things are probably a little bit off the first one is that the bat is flying backwards the second i would say he's moving a little bit too fast and the final issue is the main kind of point of this, that he's always going to be moving in that forward or right direction. So what we're going to do is work out these uh, different steps as we go through this class. So the first thing is going to be the easiest thing to approach, which will be changing the speed of the movement. We've seen again in the past that this is on the character movement component. So with the selected, do remember that we're using the default movement to be flying, which means we won't be changing the walk speed like we did with the player. Instead, we'll need to go down to the flying section and lower this. So I'm going to make this around about half at the speed that the player's moving. I think the player's defaulting to 600. So we'll make the maximum flying speed 300. This just means that it should be a little bit easier for the player or ourselves to kind of catch up and play around with the enemies. For testing and also for games you normally want the player to feel a little bit more controllable and powerful than the enemies so we can see that's fixed the movement speed which is the first and kind of simple step to do here so for the movement direction what we can do is we can pull from here and we use another of those select nodes that we've been getting used to again i'm going to go for the utility select because i like the way that this will print out the true or false when we turn this to a boolean from here i'm just going to drag and create or promote this to a variable and i'll name this one b move right so again we're defaulting to uh, the positive naming of this that move right will be the uh, the kind of expected default and what we can do is we're going to set this so if this is true we're going to set this to be one and if this is false we'll set this to be minus one so very similar to what we're doing with the input axis uh, one is going to be positive moving right minus one will be negative moving left very similar logic just a different way to drive this from a boolean now to test this we can very simply tick the i so we'll make this public hit compile and we'll see that this will default to be false because the index here was false. And this means that if we grab our bat in the editor, we should have full control over the movement direction here by finding that Boolean. We've got the move right Boolean here. So we would expect if we leave this unticked, we'll now move left. Okay, so first test done. And if we tick this, we should be moving right. And we can see we now have control over the bat as expected. So. That's going to be the kind of next part of the movement direction controlled. So we now have a variable to control this for us. Now, a nice simple way that we can update this on the begin play so we can kind of randomize the way that the bat will be moving. I'm just going to remove the actor overlap. We won't be needing that. What we can do is we can alt drag in our variable, hook this up, and we can just pull from here and use a random Boolean function. So quite simply, this will have a 50-50 chance of picking true or false when we begin play uh, we won't have any control over this we'll just use this completely random assignment of the boolean value and then when it gets to the event tick that will be taken into account and our bat will be moving in different directions okay so i've tried that there a few times and you can actually see somehow we did get an exactly 50 50 split of the randomization there i wasn't expecting that so take that for what it is and what we can do here is make sure we won't need to be testing this anymore so we can make this private again obviously we just don't want too much to be exposed if it doesn't need to be 
And the final thing for the kind of basic movement implementation, I'd say, is to get it facing the correct way. So of course we do want this to collide with the surface at the moment. If we get this moving left, then what's going to happen is we'll collide with that wall and just fly indefinitely into that wall. So we will be fleshing this out a little bit later to get the bat to change direction as soon as it hits a wall like this. But for now, I think we can just get the character facing the correct way. So as soon as we do change a direction, we can take in this move right variable that we're tracking and we can make it look either left or right depending on the way that it's moving. So again, to do this, it's very simple. I think in this case, rather than trying to work out controller rotations and things like that, this is one of those things where you can do it either way. There's no real right or wrong way, especially for something like an enemy. I know that we're not going to have anything like a bat spitting fireballs or something, so we don't need to be concerned with the rotation direction or adding in subcomponents. So I wanted to show the other way that I've mentioned to do this, which is using the sprite scaling. So completely optional, but I'd quite like to show you as many different ways to do things as possible so that you have those options in your arsenal ready to go. So what we're going to do is depending on the direction that we're moving, we're going to get our sprite component. You could also do this to the entire actor, completely up to you how you manage this. So you could set the scale of the actor, uh, but quite simply remember that what I said, one option that we could have done with our player character, rather than changing the rotation, is to simply get our X scale, set this to minus one, and we're facing the other direction. So that's all we're gonna do. A nice, simple approach here. And like I said, just another option I wanted to show you. So to manage this, what we'll do is we'll first of all, get the current scale as we'll need this for a calculation in just a moment and we can do this with the get world scale for the uh, the sprite here we can split the structure pin so we have the x y and the z and then in a similar way we're going to then set the scale based on this so again we can set the world scale 3d for our sprite and again we're going to want to split the structure pin just because if you think about it we don't want to be flipping the y or the z so we can just automatically hook these up so that these never change you could hard code them to one you may forget why you're doing that the main thing is we want to work out the calculation based on our x value then the final thing is we're going to pull from here and we're going to multiply this by a float so float multiplied by a float the return value will be what we want to set the scale of this to be and as ever we're going to pull from this final pin and we'll use a select node Again, we're gonna go for the utilities option. Uh, just to recap, we don't want that A or B, that's a little bit ambiguous. And of course, as soon as we turn this to use the Boolean value, we get the true or false. So that again is very human readable. We now know that if we're moving right, if that is true, then we want this to be scaled in one way. If it's false, then we want it to be scaled the other. And as we've just seen, this is actually a little bit different because of the way that the assets are drawn. It's very kind of common that the assets the player will be drawn facing right, the enemies are drawn facing left. It's just a, something I've noticed that 2D artists do, which means by default, moving right, we actually need to inverse this. So by default, as soon as the enemy starts moving right across the level, so if that's true, we actually want this to be a negative value. So we'll set this to minus one. And if this is false, so if we're moving left, then we'll set this to positive one. With that done, we can plug that in here, tidy this up a little bit, and that will be as good to go to test this out. Okay, and there we go. So the bat is now facing in the correct direction, depending on which way that random Boolean is selected at the begin play. If we're moving left, then he's flying forward to the left. And if we're moving right, it turns around and is moving forward to the right. So if you've been enjoying this topic, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, hit the notification bell so that you'll get the updates as soon as the next topic in this playlist goes live. And remember, if you wanted access to the full mini course all in one go, you can get that through the Skillshare link down below or through the gold tier Patreon or above rewards. Just wanted to give a big thank you to all of the people already supporting me over on Patreon. It is, of course, your support that allows me to make the more in-depth topics like this mini course for the channel. As ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.